<laughs> All right. Billy Joe, um... Uh-oh. Lost one of my links out of my chain gang, huh? <laughs> Billy Joe! Be right there, Mom. Betty Joe, you start with Uncle Joe's room. Right, Mom. And look under the bed. He knows this is our big cleaning day, so he's probably hiding there. What's this? Oh, that must be the sheet Uncle Joe made into the victory banner for the side of the train. <laughs> I was afraid all that paint wouldn't come out. Well, I thought I'd better iron it anyway. We're low on sheets. <laughs> Some victory special, that was. Yeah, we got clobber and 84 to nothing. Thing. <laughs> Listen, tell you what you do. Put this on Uncle Joe's bed. And maybe it'll discourage him from painting silly signs all over my good linen. Okay. Billy Joe! Come on, Mom. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Don't you start that. One Jaja in the family's enough. <laughs> Mom? Mom? I found something under Uncle Joe's bed. I'll bet it was Uncle Joe. <laughs> It's another bed sheet, Mom. And wait till you see what's printed on this one. <laughs> Marion Joe Carson. Honeymoon special? How does that grab you? Hey! Hey! Oh, here comes the mad painter. Quick, hide those clean sheets. <laughs> hey, girls, we struck it rich. I got the greatest news yet. Oh, you found my banner. Spoiled a surprise. I'm going to hate myself for asking, but what's the surprise? Wait till you hear. You wait till I sit down. All of you sit down. From now on, you're going to be leading a life of ease. No more work. Now, starting today, this lovely little hotel is going to be known as Honeymoon Haven, home of Mary and Joe Carson, originator of the package wedding plan that's going to make us all so rich you'll be lighting the stove with $10 bills. <laughs> All right, girls, let's get back to work. <laughs> Kate, Kate, l listen to what I'm offering. A free ride out here from town on the honeymoon special, originally known as the Hooterville Cannonball. The wedding ceremony performed by Judge Carson, the Marion judge, the wedding supper, the honeymoon, and free rides all thrown in for the unbelievable price of $10. Uncle Joe. We'll make this the honeymoon capital of the USA. We'll slow Niagara Falls down to a trickle. Uncle Joe. Where else can folks get a deal like ours? I'll bet we even get that Burton fella if he ever marries that, uh, well, what's your name? Uncle Joe, when did you become a judge? Well, I ain't one yet, but I'm on my way to Hooterville right now to take care of that little detail. Well, that little detail consists of getting elected. Oh, no, it don't, Kate. The boys are holding the train for me, so I'll have to give it to you fast. The Justice of the Peace, Dave Pierce, just resigned his office. It'll be two months until election. Somebody has to fill that job for the two months. Well, early this morning, I caught the train to Pixley, and I called Sam Drucker long distance and asked him as county judge to appoint me Justice Pro Tem till election. Can Sam Drucker make you a JP? Sure he can. Sam's a law west of Pixley. <laughs> I'm coming! I'm coming! By election time, I'll be the popular incumbent. I'll be swept into office by the thousands of grateful honeymooners that have united in happy wedlock. <laughs> Betty, give me the banner for the honeymoon special. I'd ask you all of them swearing in, but you got too much to do. Clean up the rules, put a wedding cake in the oven, <laughs> practice that wedding march on the piano, and sing an old promise me, and stuff like that. <laughs> Thinking of ways of spending all that money we're gonna make. Well, Mom, what do you think? I'm worried. I'm awful worried, girls. I thought it sounded pretty good. Yeah, me too. Yeah. That's what worries me. It sounded too good. <laughs> Stop swooping that pen around and start signing. I want to get up to Lost Lake before dark. I hear they've seen a 14-point buck up by the lake. Boy, would I like to get him in my sights. A 14-point buck. Will you stop swooping that gun and start swearing? <laughs> All right. Do you solemnly swear to perform your duties as temporary justice of the peace in the proper manner? Sam. I'm going to perform my duty so good that folks from all over the country are going to come to Hooterville and ask for Justice Joe Carson, the man who... Joe, just say, I do so swear. I do so swear. <laughs> that makes it official. As soon as you get that document countersigned and recorded by the county clerk at the courthouse. Joseph Carson. 
justice of the peace. Not until you get that document recorded at the courthouse. I'm on my way, Sam. So long, Joe. Tell Kate I'll bring her some venison. So long, Sam. Why isn't Charlie helping you? You sent him over to the marriage license bureau to drum up business. Yeah. You better let me do that, Floyd. You've been riding this wobbly train so long on these crooked old tracks, you wouldn't know straight when you see it. Don't call a Hooterville cannonball wobbly. Don't call the Hooterville Cannonball the Hooterville Cannonball. From now on, she's the honeymoon special. Joe. Listen, Joe. No, no. No more, Joe. From now on, you boys call me judge or justice or your honor. OK, listen, Joe. I seen this young couple coming out of the marriage license bureau, and I told them about your package deal. They're all set to take it. Good work, Charlie. Is that them? Yeah. Come on, kids, don't be bashful. Shake hands with the fellow that's gonna marry you, Joe, uh, Judge Carson. Hello, young lovers. <laughs> well, how do you do, sir? I'm Walter Shepard, and this is... Elsie Gregg. Yeah, but she'll soon be Elsie Shepard. Mrs. Walter Shepard. Yeah, but I'll still call you Elsie. <laughs> oh, I want you to, always. <laughs> Excuse me, kids. I hate to bust in, but it's time to say all aboard for Shady Rest. Honeymoon Haven. Well, whatever it is, all aboard for it. See you at the hotel, kids. I'll stand up for you, Walt. Would you young folks like to board the honeymoon special? Oh, would you, Walt? Would you, Elsie? Well, I'd love to. I love the way you say love. <laughs> Honeymoon special. occasion. Charlie over there, you're the groom's witnesses. And Bobby, you and Kate over there, you're the bride's witnesses. Now join hands. Not us, we're just witnesses. Are you ready? I do. Uh, I mean, I am. Walter and Elsie, we're gathered here to unite you in the bonds of matrimony. You know, you two have the honor of being the first couple I've ever married. And I'd appreciate it if you'd tell all your single friends about my unusual package deal. As you know, you get the trip out here from town, the ceremony, the wedding supper, the cake. Uncle the... Joe, this is no time for a commercial. <laughs> oh, oh. then I'll start right from the beginning again. And go on to the ending. Uh, Walter and Elsie, we're gathered here to unite you in the bonds of matrimony. <laughs> All right, everybody, a toast to the bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs. Walter Shepard. <laughs> 
Much Congratulations. Thank you. Well, that sounds so wonderful. Well, how does it feel to be actually married? How do you feel, Elsie? Well, how do you feel? I feel just like you feel. I feel exactly the same way. It's a wonderful feeling, isn't it? It sure is. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, may the bride and groom propose a toast? Sure, sure. sure. My wife and I would like to propose a toast to the marvelous man who married us, Justice of the Peace, Joseph Carson. Oh. Joe, Joe, Joe. Oh, Joe. Oh, yeah. Now let's have a little of that cake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uncle Joe. I want to apologize for doubting you. This is such a happy, wonderful occasion. This is only the beginning, Kate. You'll have to hire you one of them CPAs to count all your money. Oh, I don't care if we lose money. Having weddings here is going to be such a joy. Oh, I love you, Uncle Joe. Judge Carson in front of folks. <laughs> Joseph Carson, Justice of the Peace. Not till you get that document recorded at the courthouse. <laughs> What's the matter? You look a little green around the gills. Hey, Charlie, what time's the courthouse closed? About five. What time is it now? About nine. What time does it open in the morning? It don't. Tomorrow's Saturday. Oh, me. Do you feel all right, Joe? I mean, Judge? Just call me Joe. We're friends. Give me some of that rice. Oh, here you go. Oh, here you go. Just a minute. Come back here. Oh, Joe, what's the matter? What are you doing? I see that these kids get what they paid for. The whole package deal. And that includes, uh, that includes a wedding picture. Yeah, you gotta have your wedding picture, too. Uh, you, you want a picture of this happy moment, don't you? Uh, well, yes, I'd love one. I love the way you say love. <laughs> see, Kate, you was gonna shortchange them out of their wedding picture. Well, all right, get your camera and take their picture. You'll have to excuse me. I wanna get the girls started in the kitchen. Thank you for everything, Mrs. Bradley. It was a wonderful wedding supper. Gee, I don't know who you'd call the captain of a train. I think it'd be the conductor. Why'd you ask, Joe? Well, the captain of a ship can marry people. I thought maybe the captain of a train could, too, in an emergency. Oh, I don't think so. The only competition you got around here is Judge Drucker. And he'll be up at Lost Lake for a week. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, boys. Thank, Thank you for the bouquet. Thank you. It's Congratulations. Nice Bye. <laughs> Because you're my first couple, besides the package deal, I'm going to give you a bonus surprise. What is it? A moonlight canoe ride on Lost Lake. Tonight? Now wait, this ain't an ordinary canoe ride. This is a combination canoe ride and Indian wedding ceremony performed by Deerslayer himself, old Big Chief Drucker. <laughs> but we're already married. Not Indian style. You'll love it. Did you get the wedding pictures? You wait right here. Kate. Okay. The kids want to go up to Lost Lake for a moonlight canoe ride. Tonight? Don't embarrass them. Walter and Elsie, I wouldn't recommend trying to go to Lost Lake tonight. Why, you'd have to hike through the woods in the dark. We don't want to go, Mrs. Bradley. No, it was Judge Carson's idea. Well, it's ridiculous. Well, you might get lost and have to spend your wedding night there. Kate, let me talk to you. You wait right here. I'll be back. <laughs> now, Kate. Uncle Joe? I got a terrible feeling that something's awful wrong. Oh, not at all. Up to now, everything's gone as smooth as butter. What do you mean, up till now? <laughs> well, for the rest of the evening, we got a teensy little problem on our hands. A teensy little problem. Them two kids ain't married. Oh, no. <laughs> I won't be legal justice of the peace until Monday. That's why I wanted to take them kids up to Lost Lake, get Sam Drucker to marry him. They can't hike up to Lost Lake on their wedding night. It ain't exactly their wedding night. Don't you dare tell them. Getting a start in life like that could ruin them. Oh, those poor kids. What do we do? You're going to hike up to Lost Lake and bring Sam Drucker back here. All alone? Oh, take Floyd or Charlie. They're out in the kitchen now. Move. 
while I try and think of something. Walter, tell me something. Um, do you like hot, fluffy buttermilk pancakes for breakfast? I sure do. Come on, Elsie, I'll show you how to make them. <laughs> on our honeymoon? <laughs> Elsie, an apron, huh? An apron? Yes, an apron, an apron. Oh, Mom, surely the bride isn't going to wash dishes on her wedding night. Of course not. She's going to make pancakes. <laughs> Your mother thinks I should learn how to make pancakes for Walter tonight? <laughs> Listen, young lady, you could learn a lesson from this. Oh, sure, honeymoons are fine and exciting and romantic, but a smart bride learns how to keep her marriage exciting forever. And you think she can do that with pancakes? <laughs> Why don't you go in the lobby and keep Walt company? Hey, swell. Does he like to dance? Uh, uh, just a minute. <laughs> Floyd, why don't you go in the lobby and keep Walt company? Sure will, Kate. Does he play checkers? I, I don't know. Well, sure he does. Now take off your apron and run along. <laughs> now then, Elsie's all ready for her pancake lesson. Mom. And I'll do the talking. <laughs> Elsie? No, my name's Floyd, Floyd Smoot. We met earlier, remember? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Boy, sit right down here. We're going to have us a checker tournament. <laughs> a checker tournament? Don't you play checkers? Oh, yeah, I have. But this is my honeymoon. Okay, we'll play hearts. <laughs> no. Checkers are fine. <laughs> You said you knew the way to Lost Lake. I did, but that was before it got lost. Very funny. What do we do now? Wait a minute, Charlie. I got my bearings. I recognize that old bristly cone pine tree over there. So do I. We passed it 20 minutes ago. <laughs> well, don't get excited, Charlie. We'll find Sam. Hello! Hello! There he is. That's your echo. <laughs> oh. Well, let's follow that and see where it takes us. Oh, Elsie, you're getting the hang of it just fine. Walter's going to be so proud of you. Oh, I just hope he remembers me. <laughs> I think those are about ready. Oh, my, just look at that. Golden brown color, and they're so light and fluffy. Elsie, this is the best batch so far. <laughs> Hey, you know something, Kate? It's a lucky thing I got a hold of this boy. He needs checker lessons something awful. I whooped him 140 straight games. He can't keep his mind on the game. Elsie, did you cook all those pancakes? Yes, I did. Well, honey, I hope you won't get mad at me, but there's something I got to tell you. What? I can't eat that big a breakfast. Mom, Floyd, can I see you a second? No sign of Uncle Joe and Charlie. Dear, what am I going to do with Walt and Elsie? Floyd and I could take them for a train ride. Oh, that's a good idea. You two go down and fire up the boiler and hurry. <laughs> Foster, let's get our suitcases and get out of here. <laughs> Stairs to the kitchen. I have to have a little talk with you two. We're awful tired, Mrs. Bradley. Yeah, could we talk about it tomorrow? <laughs> this is the kind of talk that can't be put off. Now just sit down. <clears throat> well, there's sure nothing like a honeymoon. 
sure nothing like it around here. It's <laughs> very funny. Esther, you're very lucky. You got a husband with a sense of humor. Oh, I think I'm lucky. I'm the lucky one. Well, you're both lucky. You're both lucky. But you know something? It takes more than luck to make a marriage a success. Oh, there are the dangers and the pitfalls that you have to guard against. For example, you got to watch out for HLD. HLD? Honeymoon letdown. You mean it gets worse? <laughs> <laughs> She's got a sense of humor, too. Oh, that's wonderful. Honest, Mrs. Bradley, we don't want to take a train ride. But it's part of the package. Do us a favor and keep the rest of the package. <laughs> don't you want the honeymoon? Oh, yes, we want that. Well, then you have to take train ride. All part of the same package. Come on, kids. Can't keep the train waiting. We might as well go, Elsie. Maybe we can catch a little nap. I hope so. I'm just dead on my feet. <laughs> oh, any sign of Joe and Charlie yet? Not a sign, Mom. Now what are you gonna do, Ma? I got one last desperate idea, but I'm gonna need your help. Come on. carry you over the threshold, but I don't think I can get over it myself. I know what you mean, darling. I don't care what the rest of the package is. We're taking the honeymoon, and that's all. I'm with you. Oh, Walter, look! <laughs> it can't be. <laughs> what could have happened? Termites. Isn't it terrible? Termites? Thank goodness the building inspector is staying here, and he caught it before anybody got hurt. Well, there's still the back stairs. Come on, Walt. Oh, no, they're even worse. He had to tear those out altogether. <laughs> Idiots woke me out of a sound sleep when I got the zipper jam. They offered to cut him out of it, but he's too cheap. This is a $60 sleeping bag. Well, prop him up. We got to get those poor kids married. By the power vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, carry Sam out in the kitchen and I'll feed him while you work on that zipper. Take it easy. Watch my head. <laughs> Help me, girls, huh? Can. Sam's a law west of Pixley. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. By election time, I'll be the popular incumbent. I'll be swept into office by the thousands of grateful honeymooners that have united in happy wedlock. <laughs> Betty, give me the banner for the honeymoon special. I'd ask you all of them swearing in, but you got too much to do. Clean up the rules, put a wedding cake in the oven, <laughs> practice that wedding march on the piano, and sing an old promise me, and stuff like that. <laughs> Thinking of ways to spend all that money we're gonna make. <laughs> Well, Mom, what do you think? I'm worried. I'm awful worried, girls. I thought it sounded pretty good. Yeah, me too. Yeah. That's what worries me. It sounded too good. <laughs> Will you stop swooping that pen around and start signing? I want to get up to Lost Lake before dark. I hear they've seen a 14-point buck up by the lake. Boy, would I like to get him in my sights. A 14-point buck. Will you stop swooping that gun and start swearing? <laughs> All right. 
Do you solemnly swear to perform your duties as temporary justice of the peace in the proper manner? Sam, I'm going to perform my duties so good that folks from all over the country are going to come to Hooterville and ask for Justice Joe Carson, the man who... Joe, just say, I do so swear. I do so swear. <laughs> that makes it official. As soon as you get that document countersigned and recorded by the county clerk at the courthouse. Joseph Carson, Justice of the Peace. Not until you get that document recorded at the courthouse. I'm on my way, Sam. So long, Joe. Tell Kate I'll bring her some venison. So long, Sam. <laughs> 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 occasion. over there, you're the groom's witnesses. And Bobby, you and Kate over there, you're the bride's witnesses. Now join hands. Not us, we're just witnesses. <laughs> Are you? Why isn't Charlie helping you? You sent him over to the marriage license bureau to draw my business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You better let me do that, Floyd. You've been riding this wobbly train so long on these crooked old tracks, you wouldn't know straight when you see it. Don't call a Hooterville cannonball wobbly. Don't call the Hooterville cannonball the Hooterville cannonball. From now on, she's the honeymoon special. Joe. Listen, Joe. No, no. No more Joe. From now on, you boys call me judge or justice or your honor. OK. Listen, Joe, I seen this young couple coming out of the marriage license bureau, and I told them about your package deal. They're all set to take it. Good work, Charlie. Is that them? Yeah. Come on, kids, don't be bashful. Shake hands with the fellow that's going to marry you, Joe, uh, Judge Carson. Hello, young lovers. <laughs> How do you do, sir? I'm Walter Shepard, and this is... Elsie Gregg. Yeah, but she'll soon be Elsie Shepard. Mrs. Walter Shepard. Yeah, but I'll still call you Elsie. <laughs> oh, I want you to, always. <laughs> Excuse me, kids. I hate to bust in, but it's time to say all aboard for Shady Rest. Honeymoon Haven. Well, whatever it is, all aboard for it. <laughs> See you at the hotel, kids. I'll stand up for you, Walt. Would you young folks like to board the honeymoon special? Oh, would you, Walt? Would you, Elsie? Well, I'd love to. I love the way you say love. <laughs> All aboard the honeymoon spaceship.
<laughs> All right. Billy Joe, um... Uh-oh. Lost one of my links out of my chain gang, huh? <laughs> Billy Joe! Be right there, Mom. Betty Joe, you start with Uncle Joe's room. Right, Mom. And look under the bed. He knows this is our big cleaning day, so he's probably hiding there. <laughs> What's this? Oh, that must be the sheet Uncle Joe made into the victory banner for the sign of the train. <laughs> I was afraid all that paint wouldn't come out. Well, I thought I'd better iron it anyway. We're low on cheeks. <laughs> Some victory special, that was. Yeah, we got clobbered 84 to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, tell you what you do. Put this on Uncle Joe's bed. And maybe it'll discourage him from painting silly signs all over my good linen. Okay. Billy Joe! Come on, Mom. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Don't you start that. One jaja on the family's enough. <laughs> Mom, I found something under Uncle Joe's bed. I'll bet it was Uncle Joe. <laughs> It's another bed sheet, Mom. And where do you see what's printed on this one? <laughs> Marion Joe Carson. Honeymoon special? How does that grab you? Hey! Hey! Quick oh, up the mad painter. Quick hide those clean sheets. <laughs> hey, girls, we struck it rich. I got the greatest news yet. Oh, you found my banner. Spoiled a surprise. I'm gonna hate myself for asking, but what's the surprise? Wait till you hear. You wait till I sit down. <laughs> All of you sit down. From now on, you're gonna be leading a life of ease. No more work. Now, starting today, this lovely little hotel is gonna be known as Honeymoon Haven, home of Mary and Joe Carson, originator of the package wedding plan that's gonna make us all so rich you'll be lighting the stove with $10 bills. <laughs> All right, girls, let's get back to work. <laughs> Kate, Kate, l l listen to what I'm offering. A free ride out here from town on the honeymoon special, originally known as the Hooterville Cannonball. The wedding ceremony performed by Judge Carson, the Marion judge, the wedding supper, the honeymoon, and free rice, all thrown in for the unbelievable price of $10. Uncle Joe. We'll make this the honeymoon capital of the USA. We'll slow Niagara Falls down to a trickle. Uncle Joe. Where else can folks get a deal like ours? I'll bet we even get that Burton fella if he ever marries that, uh, well, what's your name? <laughs> Uncle Joe, when did you become a judge? Well, I ain't one yet, but I'm on my way to Hooterville right now to take care of that little detail. Well, that little detail consists of getting elected. Oh, no, it don't, Kate. The boys are holding the train for me, so I'll have to give it to you fast. The Justice of the Peace, Dave Pierce, just resigned his office. That'll be two months until election. Somebody has to fill that job for the two months. Well, early this morning, I caught the train to Pixley, and I called Sam Drucker long distance and asked him as county judge to appoint me justice pro tem till election. Can Sam Drucker make you a...